Who is this? There is a bomb under your seat. If you... Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2023 action thriller Retribution. The film is directed by Nimrod Antal and it stars Liam Neeson, Lily Aspen, Jack Champion and Matthew Modine. Now the film focuses on Liam Neeson's character Matt Turner who is um, like a bank executive, he's like some financial expert. Um, things haven't been going particularly well uh, and this one particular morning he takes his two children to school, he's dropping them off and he receives a phone call from a mysterious stranger who says that there is a bomb uh, installed underneath his seats and if he attempts to get out of the car or attempts to phone the police and deviates from his uh, instructions in any way he will detonate the bomb. Um, obviously Liam Neeson initially doesn't take this seriously, his character he um, checks under the seat, um, realises it's in actual fact truth, and then he witnesses um, a car explode uh, that is kind of been put on as a show for him to show that this guy on the other end of the line is absolutely telling the truth. Liam Neeson then spends the rest of the film trying to figure out how he can get him and his children out in one piece um, while figuring out who this mysterious person is at the other end of the phone. Right, what are my thoughts on Retribution? Well, it is easy to look at this, and I certainly did, so I don't blame anybody else. It's easy to look at this as another middling, uh, middle-of-the-road, generic Liam Neeson action thriller, the kind that he's been churning out for over a decade now. Um, many of them are certainly watchable, but don't exactly offer anything, you know, new or interesting. Um, so it, it, we're all kind of getting a bit of fatigue with these movies. I think that's fair to say. However, that being said, I kind of went into this film with low expectations and I came out of it actually enjoying it. It exceeded my expectations, so to speak. Um, it was far better than it had any right to. Now, if you kind of seen the trailer for this or you know the premise of it it sounds very much like speed um you know speed obviously is the action classic where you know the bomb's on the bus and if it drops below 50 mile an hour the bus explodes so on and so forth um very very similar concept except um the basically it's, it's like on a pressure pad this bomb so if he if he tries to get out of the car or his kids try and get out of the car the bomb will explode um, but beyond that, the similarities kind of end. Um, what you actually get here is a fairly taut thriller. And I think what really does add to the tension here is the fact that his kids are in the car with him. Um, and you've got this character actually played quite well here by Liam Neeson. And we all know Liam Neeson's a good actor, but there are occasions with these... Um, some of these generic action films that he does that it does kind of feel like he's phoning in the performances sometimes well i think he's actually pretty good here um he kind of plays this distracted man who's quite short with his kids um kind of invisible to his wife um and you know through the process of the film comes to realize how important they both are to him his children and his wife which you know I know, I know what you're all thinking, oh, well, that's pretty convenient, you know, we didn't expect that. And to be fair, there is a lot of this film that is very, very predictable. Um, it's the worst part of the film, the predictability of it. And the, um, the villain, the guy at the other end of the phone, the way they handle that, and I, I don't... It's just so painfully obvious who it is, it kind of ruins the film a little bit. Um, because it is just so damn obvious. There's a, there's a, lot, there's a scene in this film, and, and when that scene finishes, if you don't know who the, who the villain is at the other end of the phone, then you really haven't been paying attention. So it does kind of let itself down occasionally, this film, with, with some of the stuff that it does. Yes, it does feel overly familiar, um, but... It, it also keeps you entertained and quite and surprised as well a couple of times because 
there are some moments in this film where you see this this character Matt Turner react angrily or kind of you know um decides he's not going to take this lying down and it and and he knows that even though this killer's got him by pressing the button he's going to explode the car he also knows he's got this kill this 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 killer this person on the other end of the phone under his control as well because this killer wants something from Liam Neeson and he, Liam Neeson understands and knows that he's not just going to blow him up because he needs him too at the same time so you get this nice back and forth between them sort of thing when that realisation comes to effect in the film uh, and again that works and there's also because um, there's these bombs going off around the city sort of thing all, all these people connected to Liam Neeson um, the media and the authorities all think Liam Neeson is the person that's doing all this, and he's involved. So it's got it's got that it's got so it's got stuff going for it that keep you will keep you interested and entertained. And there's some nice thrilling moments in it. As an action film, the only real action you get really is 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 from him within the car. And there's there's very little goes on outside of the car here. Um, so. It, Action really is not really the right word for this film. You know, it's more of a thriller than action, but there is some nice driving scenes and stuff going on. Uh, it's set in Berlin as well, so it's got, like, um, a different look and feel to the film. And in actual fact, something I didn't know before um, preparing for this review is that this is in actual fact um, a remake, the third remake of the... It was initially released in Spain, I think they made it in Spain, uh, then I think they remade it in Germany, and then they remade it in South Korea, and now it's been remade again. Um, so there must have there must be something going for the film. It's been remade, I think, like I say, three times from the original since 2015. So, yeah, I mean, if the premise sounds interesting to you, and you're a fan of Liam Neeson, you're probably not going to come out of this film massively disappointed. Is it the best work he's done? No. But compared to some of his more drab efforts in the last few years, this is above average, in my opinion, and entertaining. Um, and I certainly had quite a good time watching it, I'm not going to lie. So that's why I've given this one a 7 out of 10. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this film. Um, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this review, please like the video. And I will, of course, be back with plenty more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.